Okay, is it working? Can people hear me? I think you can comment real time and I'm hoping that you will so I don't feel so weird and all alone here in my office talking to my computer. I see people joining. Does that mean people can hear me? Hello, everybody. A bunch of people joining. Braden Smith. Hey, Braden. Hey, Meredith says it's working. All right. Good morning. This is weird. <laughs> it's weird for me anyway. I don't know if it seems weird for you. Is there a heater going on in the background? No, I think it might be my laptop's fan that you're hearing. Are you guys having a hard time hearing me? Donnie says speak louder, but I never know if he's just messing with me. I'm just giving folks a chance to join before we get started. So can you hear me okay, or do I need to do something? Okay, it's not that bad. I guess that'll be good enough. Um, I discovered right before we did this that you can also do live streaming on YouTube. That might be a better option um, maybe for next week. I also think I could probably get a better mic uh, that might help for next week. Um, yeah, okay, sorry about the fan. It, has to, it must just be my laptop fan. Maybe it'll stop. So here we are. What an adventure we are on. Good morning. I'm totally new to live streaming, so please be patient with me. Um, it does feel really weird to be sitting in my office by myself talking to my laptop, but the comments really help. It really helps me not to feel like I'm all alone in here talking to myself. Um, just a quick recap of what we're doing. If you're watching this, I'm sure you're up to speed, um, but based on the recommendations from Steve Lawson that that he forwarded along from medical professionals who had recommended this to them. We're shutting down our church gatherings for two weeks. Um, that means no church today uh, together, obviously. Uh, it also means no church-wide prayer meeting that we had planned this Wednesday. But I will be in touch with some ways that we can still pray together. So be looking for that. Um, it means no church next Sunday, uh, which also means no child dedication Sunday school class. I had invited a lot of the young parents to. I'll be in touch about rescheduling that. That won't be a problem. We'll just do it another time. Um, no potluck or Bible study next Wednesday, the 25th. And hopefully we'll all be back to normal the following Sunday, the 29th. But uh, we'll, we'll just keep monitoring the situation and decide about that. Um, the board is still going to meet this Tuesday at 7 but we have decided not to meet in person. Matt Hegler is going to arrange for us to meet, uh, I think by telephone conference or, or video conference, I'm not sure, but he's gonna handle that for us. In the meantime, if you still wanna give your um, contribution to the church ministry, you can do that on our church website, doolinsgrovechurch.org. Uh, you can also mail it in or drop it off. I'm still gonna be around. It's not like we're fully quarantined where we can't leave our homes. Uh, we're just not supposed to gather in, in big groups. So um, all this is just to be safe. It's just a precaution. We're not freaking out or panicking. As I understand it, if others had taken similar measures, this whole spread would have been uh, lessened significantly. So this is all just preventative, just trying to be prudent. And uh, it's kind of exciting in a way. It gives us an opportunity to uh, be the church in a little bit different way than we're used to. So including having the message online. So do you guys have any other thoughts or questions about just what we're doing as a church right now before I get into the to the message this morning? I have my notes up here, so I'll be looking over here. All right. So interestingly enough, 
we started second current uh yes yeah, second corinthians last week and so the natural section of scripture that we're moving into today i think is really appropriate for all this coronavirus stuff it's second corinthians chapter one verses three and four i had already mapped out the sermon and titled it uh 10 truths about affliction and comfort uh, we're not going to hit all 10 today but i think scripture about affliction and comfort will be helpful to us as we navigate all this so first let's define our terms actually first let's pray this has got me all mixed up doing this on my laptop we have to pray we we um are totally dependent on the lord here um so I'll, I'll lead us in prayer and I ask you to pray where you are for God's help. Father, thank you so much for modern technology that even though we are uh, not meeting together in person, we can still meet together. We can still fellowship. We can still be in touch with each other, love each other. We can still worship you together, pray together. We can still receive your word together. Thank you for that gift. Um, now I'm going to share some thoughts from Scripture, and everybody's in their homes and wherever they are with whatever's going on. I just pray that you would help us to settle, settle in, settle our hearts and our minds and our spirits, to be receptive, and I pray that you would do wondrous things in us through your word and enable us to be the body of Christ here during this really extraordinary time when many people are very afraid and confused and not sure what's true and not sure which way is up, would you please empower us to be your ministers in our communities? In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So we're going to define our terms first. It occurred to me right as I was starting up that I should have written this up here, although I'm not sure if that appears backwards to you guys or not. Instead, it's still uh, where Lillian's written all over it. I didn't write it up there, so you'll just have to listen. Affliction and comfort. That's what this passage is going to be all about. So first, let's define affliction. And I know this is never the most exciting part of a sermon, but if we can get this clear, then the whole rest of the, the uh, passage is going to be a lot more helpful. Affliction is translated in the Bible in a couple of different ways. You'll see it called tribulation. You'll see it called persecution. You'll see it called distress. Literally, it's the idea of pressure being squeezed and rubbed and, and ground together. And in the context of our passage today, uh, I'm going to define it as suffering and burden beyond what our strength can handle. So when we're talking, when I say affliction during the rest of this little devotion here, that's what I have in mind from the passage. It's suffering and burden that is beyond what our strength can handle. So that's affliction. Comfort is translated in a lot of different ways in the scripture. It's often translated exhort or encourage. Um, literally, it's, it's uh, a prefix that means close and a word that means uh, to call or to call out. So it's the idea of someone moving really close to you and encouraging you, exhorting you, helping you along. Um, so in our context, the way I'm going to define it and what I mean when I say comfort is the God-given ability to endure affliction by abandoning our own strength and relying on God. So comfort is the God-given ability to endure affliction by abandoning our own strength and instead relying on God. So uh, hopefully we're, we're clear on our terms, what, we're, what we mean here. Um, I'll, I'll reiterate it later as we go through, but the place to start, if you're feeling afflicted right now, under pressure, in distress, uh, anything like that, the place to start for Christians is always with God. Uh, we tend to want to start with ourselves, our situation, and get bogged down, but Scripture teaches us to start with God and remembering who he is, and that's what our passage does. So 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God 
of all comfort. God is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we think about our affliction, the fact that we are God's children through Jesus Christ means that the same Father who comforted Jesus when he was suffering beyond what his human body could handle is the same Father who comforts us. The good news of Christianity is that we sinners who have rebelled against God and do not deserve to be close to him at all through Jesus's death and resurrection receive forgiveness and cleansing and adoption as sons and daughters and we actually become God's children and it's the same father that Jesus relied on we get to rely on so he is the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ he is the father of mercies that means that he is not up there doling out what we deserve you something like this coronavirus comes along and you might be thinking oh what have we done to deserve this well if god was going to dish out what we deserve we would all have been damned a long time ago he is instead the father of mercies toward his children through jesus christ so he's not up there doling out what we deserve he he doled that out onto jesus on the cross and for us he dispenses mercies um, blessings we don't deserve and then finally, he's the God of all comfort. And that's really the springboard into these, these 10 points, uh, 10 truths about affliction and comfort. Again, we're just going to do two. And I'm about to get in the first one, and I realize I forgot to encourage you to get a piece of paper and something to write with. You may already have that if you're a note taker. But um, I'm going to have a couple of things for you to jot down here in a minute. So if you're at home, you should be able to come up with that pretty easily. Okay, so the first truth about affliction and comfort is that God comforts us in all our affliction. God comforts us in all our affliction. Let's read the first part of verse 4. Actually, I'll read verse 3 to get a running start into verse 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction. Who comforts us in all our affliction. So that's a simple truth uh, for you to hang your hat on right now in light of the coronavirus, but in any affliction you might be experiencing. If you're a Christian, God comforts you in all your affliction. This is a real general place to start. Um, God is not selective in what affliction he is willing to comfort. Uh, what I mean by that is he's a good father and he comforts his children in, in the severe afflictions and the small afflictions. He doesn't reserve his comfort for the holiest and noblest afflictions only and then tell us to just rub some dirt on it and get over it about our small afflictions. He comforts us in all our affliction. Uh, this is the way a good dad comforts his children. If a good dad has a child who uh, has some severe affliction, uh, is diagnosed with cancer or uh, loses a very close loved one, that good dad is going to comfort that child, but that doesn't mean he's going to ignore the child in small afflictions. The child gets a, a little splinter in his finger. The, uh, the good father still comforts that child, or the, or the child gets his feelings hurt. The good father will still comfort that child, even though in the grand scheme of things, it's a relatively small affliction. I, um, as a pastor, I walk with people through all levels of affliction quite a bit, and I can't tell you how many times people have expressed something like this to me that, you know, yes, um, I've been struggling with some problematic emotions lately. I've just been feeling really blue, really sad, but I know there are Christians who are experiencing really intense persecution around the world, being killed and martyred for their faith. So I shouldn't even bring it up. But that's not really the right way to think about it. You shouldn't be embarrassed about whatever your affliction is. It's good to keep perspective. It's good to remember that, yes, there are Christians who are enduring way more affliction than whatever it is you might be feeling. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't care about what you are experiencing. Affliction is affliction. 
It always hurts. And God always cares. He comforts us in all our afflictions. I wonder if any of you parents have ever experienced this. I know I have, although I can't think of a specific example. But you have your children or your child there and they skin their knee or they hurt themselves. Something in you naturally wants them to come to you for comfort. But if they go to someone else, even if it's your spouse, something in you kind of, I don't know, is kind of hurt by that a little bit. Or if you're with uh, their grandparents and they go to the grandparents instead of you, something in you feels a little bereft because you wanted to be the one to comfort your child. God wants to comfort his children. He wants to comfort you. You're not bothering him with your affliction. He is the God of all comfort. This flows freely and naturally from him. So uh, here's the first thing if you uh, manage to find some paper and a pen or pencil to jot down. Um, Think about yourself right now. What affliction is in your life right now that you could go to God for comfort for? What uh, distress? What pressure are you under? What, where do you feel that you're running out of the natural strength within yourself to cope and to handle it? I want you to, to, to get specific enough to actually jot them down because after this time together, I want to encourage you to just point by point, pray those afflictions over to the God of all comfort. Just say, say, God, I, I know this, um, you know, I haven't prayed about this because it just seemed like a small thing, but it's been nagging me in the back of my mind. And um, your word reminded me this morning that, that you're the God of all comfort and you comfort us in all our afflictions. So would you please comfort me now? Would you please enable me to endure this affliction by relying on you instead of myself. And he will comfort you, whatever it is. It's uh, maybe the complications related to aging that you might be experiencing. Um, some of you are super duper old. I'm just kidding. Uh, is that, that's actually true, but uh, I meant that more as a joke than an insult. Uh, it might be that you have um, some really painful, complicated things going on in your family right now. Some of those close relationships can be the most painful. Uh, it might have to do with the virus. You may be someone who's already prone to be anxious about getting sick. And here we go with this coronavirus and we're canceling church for two weeks and you might really be struggling with anxiety. Um, you may be struggling with some really complicated logistical issues related to all of this because the schools have been shut down and now You've got to figure out what to do with your children for these weeks while you're trying to work and it may just be really stressful or you may actually be sick um if if things progress the way some people are afraid they will some maybe even several among our church family may get this virus and uh then you know that will come with its own afflictions um whatever it is god comforts us in all our affliction so write, write them down, get specific enough to, to pray about them, to go to him for comfort, and he will comfort you. Now, back to our definition of comfort, though, that doesn't mean necessarily he's going to remove the affliction from you. So you might be physically sick, and so you go to God for comfort. He can heal you, and he might heal you, but he might not. He may have deeper, better things he's trying to bring about in you through that sickness that require, requires you to endure it rather than, than to escape it. Uh, you may be under a great deal of stress at work. You go to the Lord. He could resolve whatever it is that's causing you that stress at work, uh, but he might not. He may have other things going on, but he will enable you to endure it by relying on him rather than yourself. That kind of comfort is guaranteed. Uh, you may have a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter that you can't even sleep at night. You're so concerned about. I can bring them back and restore them, uh, but he might not. He might not yet. It may be something for the future, or maybe that he's doing something else through that situation. But he can enable you to endure the affliction, by helping you to rely on him rather than yourself. So he'll come close to you. He'll come close beside you. And he'll encourage you, and he'll give you his strength and peace. 
and he'll help you to get through it. So that's the first uh, truth about affliction and comfort from 2 Corinthians chapter 1. God comforts us in all our affliction. I just have one more. Everybody still with me? Somebody can comment or something and indicate. Uh, hopefully you're still there. Okay. The second one, last one for, for this morning. God comforts us so we can comfort others. God comforts us so we can comfort others. It comes from the second half of verse 4. So let's read all of verse 4. Okay, the God of all comfort, that's in verse 3, verse 4, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Okay, God comforts us in all our affliction. God comforts us so we can comfort others. So just quick refresher, 2 Corinthians, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the Christians in Corinth. Um, they were not so sure that they should be listening to Paul. Paul seemed to suffer a lot. He just seemed like someone who had kind of a difficult go of it in life and ministry, he encountered a lot of persecution and a lot of trouble. Um, and then they had these, what Paul called super apostles, who seemed like they had it all together. They were great public speakers, charismatic. Uh, compared to suffering Paul, they just seemed like they were very polished and like they knew what they were doing. And so they kind of were suspecting that Paul might be a bit of a fraud. Um, all right, people are still there. Excellent. Wow, oh, all kinds of people still there. Still there. You guys are awesome. Paul then is writing this to say, no, all this suffering that I have experienced in my ministry team that we have experienced and are experiencing and all this comfort that we are receiving from God, this is what makes us legitimate to minister to you. Who would you rather have minister to you? Um, some fashion model looking minister who's never suffered a day in his or her life and um, really just has general advice to offer you? Or would you rather have someone who has suffered deeply who's experienced all variety of human turmoil and pain and distress and has experienced a matching comforting grace from God who's been there close with God working through difficult things. I think the lesson for us, because we still struggle with this uh, for sure, we're drawn to the polished uh, church ministry leaders who seem like they've got it all together and it's smooth sailing, but God's best ministers might not look at all like what the world thinks a good leader should look like. Uh, it makes me think of this Instagram account. I might have told you guys about this before. I think it's called Preachers and Sneakers. So uh, in fashion today, I guess, I'm clearly no expert. I actually realized this morning I've worn the same shirt the last three Sundays. Um, that's plenty of time to wash it between Sundays. But uh, in, in fashion today, I guess it's... it's um, desirable to wear these really expensive sneakers, like 80s style looking sneakers, and they can get really expensive. And so this Instagram account has pictures of uh, sort of celebrity Christian, celebrity Christian ministers, authors, public speakers, pastors, whatever, who are wearing these uh, sneakers. And then they put beside it how much these sneakers cost. And some of them are like thousands of dollars. I, I think Paul would not have been wearing sneakers that costed thousands of dollars to look cool. Um, I, I think that he was way more raw and real than that because of the sufferings of his ministry. Uh, if you have nice sneakers, I'm not casting judgment on you. You filthy sinner. All right. Uh, somebody had noticed I was wearing the same shirt. I actually only have a couple that I like enough, and I just alternate them just to give you a little insight that you didn't ask for. Okay, there, there's another dimension to this second point, that God comforts us so we can comfort others. So we have the, the dimension of, of what this meant for Paul and the Corinthians, and that's what it means for us too. Um, 
but it's captured by this quote that I ran across. I can't remember who wrote it, but this wasn't me. Um, here's the quote. It says, God does not comfort us to make us comfortable. God comforts us to make us comforters. Comforters. Nobody says it like that. Let me say that again. God does not comfort us to make us comfortable. God comforts us to make us comforters. God's comfort for you and your affliction is not an end in of itself. It's a means to an end. You're not designed merely to be comfortable, to uh, you know, be healthy and have a nice home and watch lots of TV. That's not what you're designed for. You're designed to love God and love people. So God's comfort is designed to enable you to do those things, to rely on him more and to love people better. Um, any comfort that you have received from God is for you, but it's not just for you. It's for someone else. You can rest assured he has given you that comfort for you and for someone else or maybe for lots of other people. So thinking about the virus, you might be someone who was able to secure boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of toilet paper. Apparently this is a, a huge deal. Um, you might have a, a two year supply of toilet paper. Well, that's, you know, that's a blessing. That's good. God provided that for you, but he didn't only provide that for you. That's for you and for anyone you know who may be in risk of being out of toilet paper. Uh, whatever you're blessed with during this, this time of the virus, uh, you may have flexibility and availability. And that's a blessing, but that's not just for you. That's for you to use for others. Because there's going to be a lot of parents who are really in a bind for child care. A lot of uh, elderly folks that are really going to be c concerned about trying to go to the grocery store. And uh, you may have the flexibility, the ability to go for them, what, whatever it might be. Um, you may be blessed with health during this whole virus thing, and others may start to get sick. Well, your health isn't just for you, it's for others also. So you may need to serve in some way during all this. Uh, I hope that we will find a lot of ways as individual Christians and as a church to comfort others during this time. I think it's a great opportunity for that. Uh, and here's another uh, opportunity for you to jot something down on your piece of paper with your pen. Any ideas that you might have for yourself or for us as a church, how we can be of comfort to others during all this, jot those down and maybe share them on our Facebook group or share them with me or whoever you think is appropriate so that we can uh, move beyond good intentions about being of comfort to other people and actually do something. Um, another thing you might want to jot down is any needs that you might have right now. For example, if you're one of these parents who is not sure how you're going to handle your kids being out of school for two weeks logistically, jot that down. It may be that I or the church somehow can help you and feel free to get in touch with me about that. More generally, not just thinking about the virus, more generally, some of you have experienced God's comfort in some ways. Um, some of you have experienced some real affliction in your life. You've been pressed beyond your natural ability to endure, and God has come to the rescue and enabled you to endure by enabling you to rely on him instead of yourself. Um, I would encourage you to jot down any of those times um, I know we're moving kind of fast, so some of these you might have to jot down later. Um, but remember those times that God has comforted you in affliction. And then think about how, having experienced that comfort, you might be better equipped to comfort others now. And that'll, be, that'll look different for all of us. Some of you have, in the past, cared for your aging parents in, I think, heroic ways that I'm sure pushed beyond your natural strength uh, to be able to, to handle along with your work and your, your other responsibilities. And you experience God's comfort during that, but you might be a great source of encouragement to people who, who now are in that same situation who are caring for their aging parents 
and are juggling all those demands, you, you would be such a resource of wisdom and, and just hang in there kind of encouragement. So you might look for opportunities to do that for people. Uh, some of you have parented children through some intensely difficult seasons of parenting and God comforted you and enabled you to do it and make it through. You would be a huge resource to comfort and aid and help parents who are in that situation right now. So you might move relationally move closer toward those people to give help. Um, we all, I think, are in this situation that we have sinned a great deal in our lives and we've experienced the comfort of God's forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Well, that's, that's for us, but also for others. Uh, we should feel free to share our testimonies of how God has forgiven us and freed us from sin in order to be of comfort to other people. So there's a lot of different ways that this could look. But any comfort you've received from God is for you and someone else, maybe many other people. And then finally, just one, one last thought on this last point. Um, God comforts us so we can comfort others. I think this is a pretty good way to test whether or not we're going to God for comfort or something else. Uh, what I mean is we are often tempted to go to lesser sources for comfort other than God and skip going to God at all because we have so many options for things that could distract us or bring us a little bit of comfort. Um, we might go to our friends or our family instead of going to God. We might uh, turn to food or TV or a good book or working harder or escape vacations. All those things are good and they're great blessings, but if they circumvent us from going to God for comfort, uh, then they become idolatrous and they become bad and um, they cut us off from the source of true comfort. So we can ask, does this source of comfort turn me inward or outward? Does this source of comfort turn me inward or outward? Does it leave me sedated or serving? Does it only relieve my affliction or does it enable and equip me to relieve others also? So I'll give you a really personal example since it's just us here on this Facebook live video. Um, so I'll, I'll give you an example about myself. And we'll do it like choose your own adventure style. Do you remember those old books, choose your own adventure where you read so far and then the character has a choice to make and you get to decide what he does. And depending on what you decide, it tells you what page to flip to to see where the adventure goes from there. So here's a choose your own adventure example of comfort and affliction. So you're, you're me, you're Matt Broadway, and you have a, a really stressful meeting with somebody. Uh, it's a super intensive counseling session or uh, a conversation uh, related, and it's a conflict situation. Um, it's either you're trying to help people out of conflict or you've done something wrong and, and created conflict with somebody, you've got to enter into this. Whatever this meeting is, there's tons of pressure and it's fraught with potential to say the wrong thing and, and cause pain or lead someone astray is just tons of pressure. So after you, you make it through that meeting, you just feel wrung out, um, exhausted emotionally, kind of feel fearful or maybe even regretful because maybe you did say the wrong thing or uh, something didn't go, go quite right as best you can tell. So you want comfort. Okay, so here's the choose your own adventure. Do you, A, raid the kitchen for sugar and find the ice cream in the back of the freezer and eat two giant bowls of ice cream while watching Netflix in order to just momentarily soothe and comfort yourself? That's option A. Or do you, B, go for a walk and talk to God about everything that you're feeling and experiencing and point by point, cast your anxieties onto him because he cares for you. Now, if you choose A, uh, you will be comforted for just a little bit. It will feel physically comfortable for a minute. Um, but then after you finish that, that ice cream and turn off that Netflix, the affliction is right back on you because nothing was solved or resolved. It was just a momentary distraction. And you're not left better able to minister to others. 
you're left uh, ashamed and a little bit fatter than you were before. So that's option A. Option B may take longer to get relief. You may not feel relief immediately like you would with the ice cream and Netflix, but you will be truly comforted by the God of all comfort. He will enable you to endure your affliction by helping you to rely on him instead of yourself. At the end of that prayer walk, you will be better able to minister to other people right after that and in the future because of having experienced that comfort. I know it's a true story, Meredith. I already told him, I already indicated that. I, st I struggle with that. I'm getting better. I'm growing. Okay. Bottom line from all this, Christians, those who are in Jesus Christ, those who have received God's gracious forgiveness through Jesus Christ and uh, who are following Jesus as their Lord, who've been adopted as children of God, Christians, the God of all comfort comforts us in all our affliction so that we can comfort others. This coronavirus is a great opportunity for us to live this out. Uh, however this may be affecting you, I want to encourage you based on this scripture to look up and out. So, and you might want to write some things down related to this. When I say look up, I mean look up to God for comfort. Um, don't look to the news for comfort. I mean, obviously that's a no-brainer. There's no comfort to be found in the news. Uh, don't first look to your friends for comfort. Don't first look to uh, food or stockpiling or hoarding or whatever for comfort. Look up to God for comfort. He can enable you to endure whatever affliction by helping you rely upon him and not yourself. So if you, if you have concerns related to any of this, write those down so you can pray through them. And then secondly, look out to others. Um, you've received comfort from God so that you can deliver that to others. How can you help others who may be experiencing the same afflictions or concerns that you've been experiencing? With the comfort that God has given you, how can you give that to others? Uh, it may be really practical ways of helping people. It may be prayer. That certainly will involve prayer. Um, it may be sharing testimony of how God has seen you through similar times of affliction. Uh, I don't know, but write down anything that comes to mind and that'll be sort of God's assignment for you this week. Uh, that's it for now. I've got 10 truths about comfort and affliction, but I'm not gonna cram them all in this morning, just two this morning. Um, and that's it for now. I love you guys very much. Uh, it's been kind of fun to see the comments. These maybe are what goes through your minds during a normal sermon, but you, you're not comfortable to shout it out. Um, does anybody have anything they want to say comment wise or ask me before we end the live video? Um, I'm going to be in touch soon. I'm sure we'll have some things to share after our Tuesday evening board meeting. Um, I'm going to be in touch about our Wednesday prayer meeting that we're, we're going to be postponing. Um, thank you, Rebecca Doolin. Where is the yellow marker? I don't know what he's talking about. Yes, that's right. Uh, President Trump declared today a national day of prayer. Um, as, as Steve Lawson mentioned, I know Steve also posted on his Facebook uh, something from the National Association of Evangelicals, which is like a prayer guide that you can use today. And you might want to go check that out. Um, uh, thanks, Emma. Thank you, guys. Tina on here. Fresh out of surgery. I hope Tina's doing well. Um, glad to see you. You're able to type, at least with one hand. So that's good. Here's Meredith with an idea. I thought about putting frozen meals in my freezer and asking people on Nextdoor, which is a, like an app or a website, if anyone was in need of food for their kids to come pick it up. That's a good idea. Thanks, Doris. Glad you're able to be a part of it. Any, any other ideas that people have, even if they're in this video? Uh, I, would, I would encourage you to post on our Facebook group, or if it's more private, you can get in touch with me. It's a good point from Rhonda um, in helping 
to also point them up to the Comforter, the God of all comfort. Thanks, Norma. I love you too. Emma, I think a daily uh, 10, 15 minute type message would be awesome and helpful as we lay low. Oh, like uh, doing more of these Facebook Live things? Well, I've got 10 points <laughs> in this, uh, from the, this paragraph. I guess I'd um, maybe share one a day or something. Yes, Lee Richardson, awesome to have you a part of the group. Tina's becoming a lefty. Uh, if you, some of you may not be aware of Tina having had surgery. She, she had a fall and uh, really, uh, really messed up her, I think, wrist and hand. Um, and went through the surgery well. So really glad to have her with us. Uh, and, and I'll think about that, um, if that would be helpful. I mean, this, this, it didn't end up being as weird as I thought it would be. Thanks to you guys commenting. That really helped. Um, so, yeah, I, I might consider doing that. Daily Devo. Alliteration means it's always a good idea. Okay. Well, I'm not going to drag it out. Love you guys very much. Keep in touch with each other. Um, anybody that comes to mind, shoot them a text, give them a call. You can still get together in person if you're healthy. Have a couple people over your house. That's what I'm thinking about doing Wednesday. I was encouraging people maybe in smaller groups of just you know a handful of people who feel comfortable doing it to, to maybe get together and pray i don't know that may be a bad idea i haven't uh checked with medical authorities on that but um we can still stay in touch with each other and still fellowship thanks lynn Good to see rob all right. all right i just want to keep hanging out with you guys but uh maybe maybe the daily devotion will be the way to do that hey katie glad you were able to oh at work cool Okay, well, I'm ending the video, but y'all can keep the conversation going in the Facebook group, and uh, we'll talk again very soon. Bye, guys.